Charlottesville, one year later. What happened then and what to expect this weekend? And what does this say about us? I'm Holland Cook in Washington. This is The Big Picture on RT America. On the August 11 anniversary, Reverend Al Sharpton will preach at the largest black church in Charlottesville. He said it didn't hurt Trump in the contemporary sense. Many that claimed moral outrage at the time then found a way to accommodate him shortly thereafter. But I think it hurt him historically. We have to remind people what he said. Next voice you hear will be instantly recognizable around Central Virginia. Joe Thomas is the longtime radio morning host on Seaville 1075 and WCHV 1260. And Joe holds the dubious distinction of having been pepper sprayed by both sides as he covered what happened that unfortunate weekend. Joe, welcome back a year later. Well, thank you for having us, Holland, and I uh, appreciate you uh, bringing some perspective a year later to our reunion weekend uh, here. I remember when my mother called me and said she was watching the uh, cable news and saw my head and got immediately panic-stricken about it, but uh, we're okay here. Well, I was there with you in Charlottesville a week beforehand, and you were already mm -hmm. telling your listeners about the impending arrival of, as you call them, the Knights in White Satin. Uh, and not yes. to make light of what eventually happened, but what must the manager at Home Depot have thought when suddenly he sold out a tiki torches? Uh, did the Charlottesville community underestimate what was about to happen? Well, several of uh, the businesses in Charlottesville don't sell citronella candles anymore. Several of us have taken to calling uh, August 11th citronella knocked. Uh, and it's not to belittle the imagery, but it, it certainly uh, bears to point out that these are not serious people. These are attention getters who are often manipulating crowds uh, to their own aggrandization. And, um, and unfortunately, what we wound up seeing is what I now refer to as Marx Brothers Weekend. Not Groucho or Harpo, but more like Carl. You had national socialists in the park and reparational socialists on the street, and they were kind of duking it out like they did in the mid-30s in Europe as to which kind of socialism was better. Uh, and, and at the end, you wound up with, with good people on both sides, and the president was absolutely 100% right, because I know some of the good people who are on both sides of it. Uh, and I was there with them. Uh, they were coming running up to me saying, what's going on? Uh, and I'm just get out of here. Uh, and unfortunately, it wound up being tragic for uh, Lieutenant Cullen and Trooper Bates and Heather Heyer. Mm. Uh, it didn't need to be that way. And unfortunately, some of the law enforcement community bears the brunt of how that escalated that way. Well, that weekend, this story went wall to wall worldwide on cable news channels. Admittedly, you couldn't be watching because you were so in the middle of the story as it unfolded. But what do you feel you really had to be there to appreciate about what came down? Well, a couple of takeaways I had. Number one, the crowds were not nearly as big as they looked. And if you talk to a lot of people, they'll tell you, carrying torches and things like that are designed to make smaller crowds look bigger. But even on uh, August 12th, I was struck by how few people were actually in the park for David Duke's little rally there. And I have a feeling we're going to see more of the same up in Lafayette Square this weekend, is that you're not really going to see this kind of result that uh, it, it looked a lot worse on camera than it was. What you had were people who were just sort of getting a little chesty about it, pushing people around, yelling at each other. Uh, but at the end of it, uh, the, the real escalation started when the Virginia State Police pushed the uh, alt-right group, the David Duke crowd, out onto the very same street where Antifa was waiting for them. Uh, it was absolutely dumb striking. I was standing with the former mayor of Charlottesville, Dave Norris. Uh, we were standing right at the side of the park covering it. And he looked at me and said, what the heck are they doing? Uh, there were 
six other e exits to the park on the other side of the park. They could have pushed the crowd out that way and sent them to their cars, and probably that's all we would have talked about uh, for August. Uh, but they pushed them both together where the violence ensued almost predictably. You alluded a minute ago to the president's take on this. Here's what he said after things calmed down. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is not your what, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. Sorry, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. How did that play locally and uh, in general with the conservatives who are your heavy listeners? Well, with all of my listeners, and I have many folks who listen from the other side of the political aisle, if you will, uh, and, and how it played was that they felt like their message being uh, anti-white supremacy should have been sanctified. Uh, and then I think as time wore on, they started to realize, hold it, maybe we didn't need to hit people with clubs, we didn't need to pepper spray them. And to their defense, they were separated from the alt-right marchers. The alt-right marchers broke their agreement with the Charlottesville police to enter the park from one side. So uh, the, the breaching of agreements began very early in this affair. Thank you, Joe Thomas. Mornings on Seville 107.5 and WCHV 1260.